All right, hey guys, welcome to 2023 Secret Sauce. Guys, it's it's weird. It's been one year. It's been a year since we got things going and rolling here in this building. It's funny how it just came, how, you know, we came into this building. This building was just here. It was here at the right time. But we had to redo the whole building. What was going to take six months, we did in six weeks. I don't know how. It just happened. We had a lot of people who who dropped in to help us during that entire process. But the one thing that was the most important is that you guys, you guys came with us. You guys came along for the ride, knowing it was going to be a tough ride just because we were new, up and going. Guys, one year later, to be doing what we're doing and having you guys here with us, our ninjas, it is, you know, Tr Troy and I, we are grateful for you guys. We're grateful for you guys doing what you do. And you guys aren't the norm. We brag about you guys. There's no doubt. We brag, we brag about our ninjas because you guys aren't the norm. You guys are different. You guys are different than what's out there. And what we want to talk this year about Secret Sauce is we're going to talk about how we're going to end this year and how we're going to start next year. So one thing I want to bring up is I want to get your minds right. We have a lot of great speakers for this afternoon. What I want you to think about is I want to set your mind, set your mind right. We always talk about process. So if you guys remember, and you guys are going to have to excuse me here again. I'm not used to having this up here in my, in my grill. We've always talked about wrong marker. There we go. We've always talked about process and that the byproduct of process is results. We've never talked, we've never wanted to focus on this because it's a byproduct. We always knew process is the answer. Well, guys, most people who are new, who aren't ninjas, who have become to be ninjas, and just people who are still struggling with process, there's one more step to process, and there's a foundation to it. And that foundation, the process, you guys ready? I can give process. I can teach you guys a process, but it doesn't mean you're going to do it. It doesn't mean you're going to complete it. It doesn't mean you're going to stay with it. And it's usually for one of two reasons. Pain and discomfort. Now, as we sit here and we think about those two words, they're what determine if we get the process done. So just give me some examples, some quick examples what stops you from getting the process done? Miss Marissa, let me ask you. What keeps you from getting a process done? You know it's what's going to help you with your business. You know it's going to make you a better agent. You know it's going to make you a better person. What stops you? Distraction. Distraction? That's a good one. Distractions. But again, why do we let the distractions take you? Something else. Excuses. 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 A byproduct of pain and discomfort. What else? Fear of the unknown. Fear. Mm -hmm. Doubt. Fear. A byproduct of fear of pain and discomfort. Doubt. A byproduct of pain and discomfort. Let me share a quick story with you guys, and I don't mean to bore you with it, but I think it gives some perspective. I've been blessed to have been raised around four people that have been great examples to what it means to harness this, to harness this portion of what I call the pain cycle. So I grew up w with the dad who had rheumatoid arthritis since he was 20 years old. 
He was in pain constantly. He lived on steroids for 25 years. So you know how you get on steroids for three days and you got to get off of them fast? He lived on them every day for 20 years. And they were, they were needed. The one thing that about my dad growing up as a little boy, you could hear him moaning in pain at night. But I would hear stories. He worked at the mine. And his buddies would tell me, oh, your dad, he'd show up with swollen joints. You knew he was in pain. But there was no more pain anyone was going to feel but the pain we were going to feel if we tried to do his work. There was hell to pay. Nobody was going to do his work. Second, as I grew up, as, as he got older, he... He retired young. He got to retire really young. I think he was like 45 years old. I, I lived like if I lived on, on a farm. I was taught to get up early. I was taught to work hard. And my dad would do this with rheumatoid arthritis, just in pain. And I never understood why. Again, I was young. My mom, she's going to be 94 this year. And it's a blessing to watch her. She suffers with a lot of pain. And my whole life, the worse you feel means the harder you work. That's what I learned from my mother. Again, somebody who does really well here. Another example. Two of my sons. We, we, we have a whole bunch of them, so... I'll, 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 I'm going to limit it to two. There's one who has migraines, real bad. Three weeks per month, he suffers from migraines, horribly, like bad. And this guy, actually, I'll find sometimes in the shower, laying on the floor, his mouth right next to the drain, curled up, having the water fall on him. The noise of the shower is killing him. Lights killing him. And I go and I check. And again, guys, this is normal. This is every day for him. Hey, you good, buddy? What can I do to help you? Oh, I'm good, pops. I'm good. I'm just, I'm just evolving, man. That's all. He goes, what can I do? What, what, what can I do? What can I help you with, dad? Again, living here. Another example. One of my sons, he was known as DSR. He played ball, played football, basketball, you name it. He was, he, he was a tough guy. He hated it. Coach used to call him DSR, does shit right. That was his name. He hated it. Stop telling me, stop slapping me on the rear, stop slapping me on the shoulder. I don't care. Tell me where I can be better. Tell me where I can be stronger. That's all he cared about. One of my brothers, you guys know him, Troy. Now, he has no idea I'm about to share this, and he'll probably kill me, but it's okay. He's going to need to learn how to deal with pain and discomfort. <laughs> One of the privileges that I get to see, and I call it a privilege, I call it a learning privilege, is that a lot of you see Troy, and you see a guy who's really good at what he does. But I get to see a person who, I get to see when he's hurting, when he has a migraine, when he has the flu, when he's sad, when he's scared. I've got to see all that. The thing you've never heard in what I've said, you've always thought of one thing. I've always said, it's not what he does that has impressed me. I've always said what? It's how he does it. See, you've always thought it was the process. No, it wasn't the process. It was this. How does he deal with this? So I've got the privilege to watch him in those 
situations. His mornings, he talks about his workouts, how he gets ready. See, guys, he's bathing in pain and discomfort. You know why? He's training in it. So he can get the process done. Without training in pain and discomfort, how, do you be, how are you supposed to become indifferent about it? He does it to become indifferent about it. Not the absence of pain, not the absence of fear, not the absence of distraction, but instead, getting comfortable with it instead. I've had that humbling experience to watch him in a human form. So maybe we ask the wrong question. We always wonder how or what you do to be so good. Maybe the question we need to be asking is how you do it. How do you deal with pain, discomfort, distractions, excuses, fear, and doubt? He feels that every day, but he trains for it every morning. My mother, my father, they train for it every day. My two sons, they train for it. Guys, when you learn to harness this, when you learn to harness this and no longer numb yourself to it, oh, now you've done it. See, guys, we're drug addicts. We are. We have an addict to numb ourselves from pain. We numb ourselves. Again, we choose a different drug. We all got a different drug we choose, but we choose one. Believe it. The question is, is we're always addicts. We always got to be working at something, right? Once we have achieved that ability to, to become indifferent, to run into the burning, burning house, be able to run into pain, run into discomfort, because we know that's where we're going to grow. That is when we're able to accomplish the things that we feel are you can't do, right? There's these impossibilities. But guys, it's been proven throughout, throughout history where our bodies are limited by our minds. I've been taught through the years, stop surviving and stop hoping. You guys go, whoa, 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 hold on. Stop hoping? Yeah, hoping is begging. Instead, have faith. Faith is believing it's going to happen. You'll notice the people who are the most successful Environments don't dictate what they can and can't do. You'll notice that those people who don't allow environments to dictate what they do, they have this innate ability to, to let, to take fear and use it as food. Guys, I see this time and time again with every agent who does really well in any environment, they can literally taste their success. They can see it. It's going to happen. It's not a matter of if, just a matter of when it's going to happen. Guys, that is the difference between hope and faith. It's the difference of believing and hoping. Through history, there was a guy, and I'll share this with you guys. I'm going to reach out of my, my square here. Um, and I'm going to share this with you guys real quick. Um, it, is a, it is a really neat, let me see if I can bring this up, guys. Bear with me. I apologize. I thought I had it up already, and I did not. Um, Here we go. Let me see if this works here. So 
There's a runner by the name of Roger Banner. I'm no, I don't know if you guys know who he is. Who knows who Roger Banner is? Anybody? He ran the three minute mile. Huh? He ran the first, yes, he broke the four minute mile. Not quite the three minute mile. Yeah, not quite. <laughs> However, he broke, he broke a record that he, he was going to run it. Or, or, you got to remember, this is a race. Doctors said, doctors, researchers said, you, it's humanly impossible to run a, uh, a mile under four minutes. It's impossible. The environment told him it, it cannot be done. He practiced, but he believed it. It can be done. He shows up the day of the race, and guess what happens? The worst conditions possible. So not only is the environment telling him you can't do it, but now the environment's telling him there's no effing way you're going to do this. It started to rain, and the wind started to blow against him. At the very end of this race, he thought he had lost. But he won the race, but he thought, there's no way I broke the record. People went crazy. He had successfully broken the record. After that record had broken, it had been being broken quickly and faster because now humans believed it could be done. He has two sayings. It says, the man who can drive himself further once the effort gets painful is the man who will win. Again, the man who is willing, the man or woman who's willing, and I apologize for the size there. Let me see if I can make it bigger. There we go. The man who can drive himself further once the effort gets painful is the man who will win. He has another saying, and it was this one right here. It is the brain, not the heart or the lungs, that's the critical organ. He says, that's what made me win. It wasn't my body. It was my brain. It allowed me to reach the potential of my body. Guys, again, pain, discomfort, transaction, uh, uh, the distractions that we go through, we have to learn to be indifferent. One last one last example. There's a gentleman by the name of, and he's one of my favorite guys in the whole world. His name is Bortolo Colon. I don't, I don't know if you guys know who he is. Pitcher. This guy, this guy was incredible. So I grew up watching this guy. And my dad taught me something about him. So when this guy came in from college, and he only played a year, he was a big, big, big pitcher, huge, big boy. And you got to remember, for those of you who don't know baseball, pitchers really are horrible. Once they go up to hit, they're, they're horrible. They don't practice hitting. This guy, they would laugh at him. People would make fun of him. The environment of Major League Baseball just made a joke out of him because when he would swing, oh my gosh, he'd, he wouldn't swing at the good pitches. He would only swing at the bad ones. And people would say, okay, this should be a good one. They would always, almost poke fun at he's coming up at bat. For 10 years, one decade, he never got on base, not once. He went to a new club. Now he's 42 years old, and he says, train me to hit. Everyone's tried, and he goes, I'm going to do this. You don't understand. They go, we do, and you're not. You do not have this skill set, and there's things you have to live with. My dad said, he said, he said, son, that man is being baptized in pain and discomfort. Watch him. I hope in your lifetime you get to watch him. 
I don't know if it'll be in mine. But this guy swings, and he swings hard. He believes he's going to hit the ball without skill. And the whole time, I was like, ah, oh, here goes my pops. You know, just one of those stories. Until one day. Watch this. A moment in history. Watch his team. Watch his team. This, this is something that through life, guys, through life, environments dictate our outcomes. Again, because we choose so. Guys, our goal this year through next is as ninjas, we do things different. We try to be different, and sometimes, guys, that, that means we have to do hard things. So we want you guys to evolve, and we want you guys that process. We're not, Troy and I, we're not numbers guys, which means there's a number out there. It means that, it means that 80, sorry, 93% of people will fail in their first two years. That's a fact, okay? That's a fact. Troy and I, we don't, we're not numbers guys when it comes to these. We do not accept the fact that that has to be the numbers. So we're gonna be focusing on this over this next year. We're gonna focus on getting you guys comfortable with pain, discomfort, to not letting your environment dictate your outcomes. What are ninjas? I sat there, and, and I, I was sitting there as I woke up. You know, and I, 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 I woke up 3.30 this morning, and I'm sitting there, and I kept saying, what are ninjas? And it, 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 it was easy. And the final goal for our 2024, what are ninjas we serve? We all know that. We want it hard. We don't want it simple. There's no learning in simple. We don't numb ourselves. We train in pain. That's what we do. Because when we train in pain, we get better. We train in pain, we can serve. We can't serve unless we're willing to train in pain. The only way we can help somebody else is to train in pain. Our environment will not dictate our goals our outcome. Our pain does not dictate the outcome. And our fears will not dictate the outcome. So our goal, guys, over this next year is to really focus on getting you guys comfortable being uncomfortable. You said it, brother. Getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. And I promise you, once it becomes normal to you, we stop numbing ourselves. We start being, stop being so, instead of being the drug addicts that we are, that we like to numb pain, numb discomfort, that's where, that's where we're going to achieve our goals. Okay, guys? So I want you to think about that. As we have all our speakers uh, talk I want you to really ask that other question, not just about their processes or what they do, but I want you to be listening on, does their environment dictate their outcome? Does it dictate their goals? I want you to think about that and stop asking the question of what the process is and start asking the question of how do you complete those processes? Remember, you cannot be bigger. Your Business cannot be bigger than you. Your business, you have to be bigger than your business. You have to build yourself to be bigger than your business. I want you to think about that as we're going through Secret Sauce, we're going through the last quarter of the year, and I want it to be our mantra as we move into next year.
next in, into 2024. Okay, guys, I'm giving the time up to uh, Troy. Here you go, brother. <laughs>